why the prince left the palace. Is there a hippie culture in India? There has been, there is, there is still. When, when, when did it start? Sixties? Really? Sixties? Sixty-five? Are you, are, you, are you remembering yourself? Who are the sort of the most prominent sort of hippie that you can think of, Indian? Okay, anyway, I th I'm just saying this because um, I think probably it's kind of relevant to mm, talk about sort of the spirit of hippie. Um, I don't want to say the prince who left the palace was actually like the pioneer hippie. I don't want to say that. Although, I don't want to also completely outright that because uh, if he was a hippie, he was a really, really important hippie. Um, and um, by the way, it was, Siddhartha was not the only um, prince who left uh, the palace. There were a lot of others who left the rich and the power during, those, uh, during that time. Mm. I mean, to name few, mm. uh, Padmasambhava, Guru Rinpoche, Padmasambhava, he was a prince also. And um, uh, Shanti Deva, some of us know this figure. And uh, Atisha Dipamkara, I believe. And uh, also, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm very bad with the history. Bodhi Dharma, who, man who is, uh, who is responsible uh, for the, the whole Zen tradition that flourished China and Korea and Japan. He was a prince, I, th I believe, and he left also the palace. And uh, <clears throat> not only uh, palace, I mean, but uh, we are also talking about the richness and the success. Like Amar Pali, very successful courtesan, uh, who left also her um, status. Also, it's not only uh, Buddhism that had this uh, practice. Jain, I think, had countless. I think India really celebrated once upon a time, probably even a little bit even today, this kind of thinking. And um, the reason why they left the palace is not really, surely, you, you know, we know that they, they were not like being irresponsible. In fact, the opposite. They were really looking for a very high purpose. They were, this was driven by a very high aim. Mm. And I'm, I, I think there is a, there's a countless purpose of aim, but um, if I may emphasize on something that's quite um, important. Uh, as a human, trust is very important. Trust. To trust is important. 
and to be trustable is important and or being able to trust i guess mainly being able to trust is very important we are not talking about you know like mundane trust like uh, lending money or asking someone to do plastic surgery or something like this we are talking about um, much deeper and profound level of trust Uh, also, I think uh, for human beings, um, being in control is very important. Um, one way or another, I guess, we are all a little bit of a control freak. Uh, being in control and uh, also art of controlling situation controlling others i guess that that's that's important for us human beings and then the next one the next um, that's important is confidence i think the confidence is such an important thing for human being mm. <clears throat> having confidence in something. So these are quite a important element that really had something to do with a prince leaving the palace. If you are looking deeper into some of his uh, teachings afterwards, for instance, when we talk about trust, what are we talking about? Trust what? Confident of what? Control what? Are we talking about trusting the environment? Are we talking about controlling the environment? Are we talking about uh, confident of um, confident with people? Uh, are we talking about confident with a system? Are we talking about trusting our, trusting our life? Um, so it's kind of an important issue for us human beings. Mm, if I single out that something that is most important, probably the single most important thing, uh, and the most powerful thing is mind. Now we have mind. I'm sure most of you do. Um, I, I say this with a, you know, you know this is uh, reaching to an age where there's a lot of automation. And I w I've been told that there's robot phenomena so it is possible that in 20 years my audience within my if i live till then my audience will also have robots listening to me which by the way has, as a buddhist we have no problem as long as this robot has fear and hope they are victim of Buddhism. <laughs> um, yes, let's come back to mind. We do have mind. And um, we need to think about this. Are we lucky that we have mind? We are not so sure. Um, is it a curse that we have a mind? Probably, sometimes. Um, why? Because as you can experience, experience, experiment now, right now, this thing called mind, it ends up knowing something. It ends up cognizing something. It ends up 
being aware of something, and it is painful sometimes. You understand, you know, this, this thing that hears, that judges, you know what I'm talking about, we just can't help. We just can't help, but we have to end up knowing, cognizing, noticing, being conscious. This is something that we have. And we can't sort of pause it for a day or the two. We can't sort of um, Yeah, we can't really uh, stop it altogether. Mm, so we have this something so powerful called mind. And I mean, we are stuck with it. We are stuck with mind. Because, and also, Many times this mind is useful because it is this mind that, that is a learning, that is doing the learning. Um, but also it is this mind that is judging, I, I think I've said that. And also it is this mind that validates. We keep on validating things. Uh, it's this mind that is measuring things. And then, as I said, hope and fear, obviously. Now, we just can't trust our mind. It's so fickle. It's so dependent on cause and conditions. It, it, it's so dependent on um, environment, education, it's so dependent on all kinds of objects. Pleasurable objects, painful objects, and I'm not even talking about mind of others. I'm talking about one's own mind. We can't trust our own mind. Not even for a moment. We can't trust, we can't have confidence to this mind. It's too fickle. It's too dependent on conditions. We cannot rely on this mind. What we think, what we feel, what we will be conscious next moment, we, we are not sure. And also, this mind keeps on making a distinctions between, now I'm getting into something very, um, very Buddhist uh, sort of um, realm here. This mind keeps on separating or, or divorcing between the appearance, the projection, realm of the projection and the realm of the reality, the truth. The mind keeps on misunderstanding. And whether you believe it or not, everything that this mind decides or come to a conclusion is incorrect. This is what Buddha said, Migdan, no one has tsema min, you know, everything that is decided, perceived, projected, imagined, has no base, it's an assumption, it is a sort of a very good, educated guess job most of the time. And also distorted always by personal bias. Um,
So this is the reason why the prince left the palace because he can't come he can't live uh, one day more um, pretending to have confidence pretending to have uh, i don't know um, pretend pretending to be uh, in control when he can't control the single most single most important and powerful thing that is his own mind so they are not you know these people like atisha padmasambhava they are not like a drop out they are not like irresponsible they were very responsible they really wanted to um because they they thought it is insane to continue with this utterly untrustable mind even as i said even for a day or a minute so they wanted to conquer this world this mind they wanted to make friend with this mind they wanted to actually be happy with this mind um they wanted to understand the potential of this mind and they used the potential of this mind and we are not and they were not only interested in the potential of the mind but they were actually interested in the capacity of the mind because they realized that most of the time we only use the very small fraction of this mind and the very small fraction of this mind that we use we use it utterly uh, you know in a realm of fantasy and hallucination so they wanted to get the bottom of this now i was asking about the hippie culture um <clears throat> because i wanted to uh say that what they have done the leaving the palace is it something that is doable today mm. everybody wants to be a leader how many books you can buy about leadership everybody wants to be a good manager management but instead they are being led they are being managed they are being led by if not somebody else by conditions by society by system by some sort of a value so you know no matter how many books you read about leadership you are still a victim of a condition everybody wants to be successful and to be successful you need to really know what is what is the meaning of accomplishment and to understand the meaning of accomplishment you need to know the meaning of goal limitation of the goal you need to know moderation the meaning of moderation also everybody wants to be creative but again here to be creative um to be creative you need to be free from a zone and this is where i wanted to come and then i will um let you ask the questions 
we are somehow, all of us, we are stuck within a certain zone. So, just like Siddhartha have this gut to leave the palace, we need to develop the gut and the confidence and the courage to get out of a certain zone. Because the zone that we live, this comfort zone, and, and the, by the way, the comfort is only comfort because we are familiar. It's like flies, they feel comfortable with the shit and they feel comfortable there. They, they, they probably feel very insecure if they are suddenly mm, in a very clean place because you create this zone. So this practice of leaving the zone, sacrificing the zone and really going beyond the zone so that we can be good leader, so that we can manage our life and others' life, so that we can be creative, so that we can be successful. So this is why I was asking whether in India we have hippie culture, because I think it's very important to be hippie inside and the yuppie outside. So with this, I'm going to ask you to ask me questions, if you have. Okay. Yes, maybe that one. Okay. 